Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new update from NVIDIA to their image scaling, which has been available in their drivers since back in 2019. However, it's been updated with a new algorithm with a six tap filter, four directional scaling, and adaptive sharpening filters, making it pretty comparable to AMD's FSR, which is also a spatial upscaler. Now, NVIDIA's DLSS is still going to be superior to this, but the great thing about this is that it works in the driver or you can access it in GeForce Experience and it'll work in any game that you go ahead and load up and give you a boost in performance while compromising the image quality a little bit, but still giving you a little bit of a boost in performance in some games that might not support these newer technologies. So maybe some older titles that are still very demanding or just games that come out uh, that don't happen to have it. And we're also going to be taking a look at the new iCat software, which is actually really awesome. It allows us to look at not only just images, but videos in a real-time side-by-side comparison with a slider that's very interactive. And I'm going to show you everything kind of in real time there, so you can kind of see that there's no shenanigans going on or anything. And it's really cool from a content creator's perspective, but it's also something that people will be able to use just to compare image quality on their own, maybe in a game that has, you know, FSR and DLSS and, you know, see what's going on with all of that. So let's get fired right into it. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you can save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for just $19.50. And then you can unlock the prestigious dark mode on Windows 10 and uh, take advantage of that. I couldn't live without it. And if you shoot over there right now, you could save 25% off, hit the buy now button and then put in my code JP25 at checkout. I'll walk you guys through the process right now so you could see how much money we're saving and how to go ahead and install this on your Windows 10 PC. That brings our price down to $14.62, total of savings of almost $5 using that JP25 code, which will work for any software products over there. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on Submit Order and select your payment mode of choice, which for me personally is PayPal, and then I'll go ahead and complete the checkout by clicking on Pay Now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page and it will update in a matter of seconds or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and type in the word activate. When you see that, activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So you guys have seen me do multiple videos and stuff, testing, comparing FSR, DLSS, talking about the image quality and stuff like that, which has gotten a lot better uh, over the past few years. So we're going to be jumping in right now. We'll be taking, first we're going to take a look at some FSR and DLSS comparisons in games that actually offer both technologies, which is only a, a small handful of games uh, that actually have FSR as well as DLSS. So th there's a few games that have it now, so it's nice that we can compare them. And using this new iCat tool, actually makes it super easy and just really good for you guys, honestly, at the other end uh, to benefit for it, from it. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in in real time. And first up, I'm going to lo load up some screenshots here uh, from Mist, the recently remastered Mist. So that is the FSR shot and that is the DLSS shot. So here you can see here, we're in the NVIDIA iCat tool, which might look similar to sort of. Um, if you've ever gone on the GeForce website when they announce new games, they'll have like some of these images and you can kind of slide back and forth and look at the comparisons and stuff. Um, left and right, and this is really no different here. So we've basically got an image slider here um, that can go back and forth and you could compare screenshots from, it doesn't have to be necessarily from FSR or DLSS, you can use it really for anything. Um, but for a content creator, this is gonna be really cool for the future for showing you guys image comparisons. So uh, in this first scene here on Mist, like I noticed zooming in on like these trees, um, this was really like one of the st most stark contrasts. And this is how cool this thing is. Like, like I said, this is all real time and I could just zoom right in. I could then pan the image around whatever I want, and I've got my FSR on the left, DLSS on the right, and I could just move this back and forth. So this is actually running on the quality FSR setting, which is 1440p, 
of resolution, while the NVIDIA side is running at performance, which is 1080p, that's half of 4K. So the NVIDIA side is actually running at a lower, at a lower quality setting, but getting comparable to even better image quality here. Again, FSR on the left. So this is FSR right here. Look at these leaves and stuff here coming off of this tree. It kind of turns into like a big black smudge. Uh, a lot of this doesn't even really look like leaves. The detail is completely lost. Whereas if you look on the right side here with DLSS, you can still see the leaves there. And then I'll go ahead and slide this over so you can see it on this side. And you can see that some of that detail comes back, especially like between the leaves here and stuff. Um, you know, the, the AI and stuff is doing a, jo a good job there of sort of actually showing what the leaves should look like. You could still tell there's leaves there. While on the FSR, like on this one here, you could see there's actual space between the leaves, whereas the FSR side just kind of turns into a big black smudge. So that's just sort of a limitation of a spatial upscaler. So like I said, just like the new one that's in the NVIDIA control panel, um, there's going to be limitations there as well. So DLSS is still going to offer um, the best quality upscaling as it's going to be using AI and it's continually learning over time and getting better and better and better and using the temporal upscaling versus the spatial upscalers that we're seeing here. But this was like one of the most impressive uh, shots that I saw of this with just the stark contrast and difference there. And again, the NVIDIA side is actually running at a lower quality setting. So this scene right here, this is in Necromunda, and this is actually not a screenshot. This is a video. This is something that I was never able to do to show you guys this kind of stuff unless I went through a video editor, which was very, very cumbersome. But this is an actual video of the game. Again, here we are, FSR is on the left using the quality setting, DLSS is on the right, uh, and that is using the performance setting. So it's basically 1080p versus 1440 using the different technologies upscaling, and we are getting comparable uh, visuals here to FSR using a lower setting. So pretty impressive, and it, like I said, this iCat tool is like, it's the cat's pajamas being able to do these things side by side. Even on the video, uh, I can zoom in and stuff on this, and I can I can go ahead and pause that, I can, I could slow it down if I want to, to half speed and kind of move this around and go back a little bit if I need to and sort of line things up as I need to. And you guys can sort of see stuff in real time. So you can see if there's any sort of like uh, motion vectors or anything sort of coming in on the objects, which we can see some shimmering there actually uh, on the FSR side. It actually looks a lot duller uh, as it goes through there. It looks like a kind of like a much, much lower quality. The, the, the NVIDIA side doesn't look great either because again, this is on the performance setting. If this was on the quality setting, we would definitely see that image quality come up. Um, and then we can go on something like the fence here where we're getting like really fine lines and we can kind of come over and put that side by side. And I would say on the fence lines, I'd say we maybe are seeing a little bit more sharpness there on the FSR side, but again, that's running at a higher resolution. So that's sort of to be expected. And this is paused here, so I can hit play and there's some particle effects that'll kind of go by, but um, you, know, you can see some kind of shimmering going on in the background there. Uh, on both of them, actually, you can see a little bit of shimmering on whatever this object is sort of, sort of there in the background. Um, we can go ahead and punch in on these uh, these tanks here, these like oxygen tanks or whatever they are. Kind of go back and forth on that. Not too much difference, actually, on the dials. I would say they're about equivalent, honestly. And we can try to go in on maybe some of these textures here on the on the canisters themselves. And, yeah, pretty close, honestly. But again, I, I would say maybe... On some of this stuff, the FSR is maybe just edging out DLSS a little bit, but that's running at a higher quality setting. So pretty cool that they can actually get even close, um, even get close at all by running at a, a significantly lower resolution. Like the detail on the gun here, I would say actually looks the same. That's pretty cool. And like this tool is awesome. I love being able to use this thing. This is so much fun. And for the last comparison here, I do want to show you um, the na like native resolution, DLSS, as well as the new uh, spatial upscaler. So we're going to take a look at all three here, and then I'm going to show you how you can actually enable um, the NVIDIA driver level spatial upscaler if you want to go ahead and use that. Let's go ahead and move that over there so we can get these into all the same gameplay sequence. And I'll slide this over. Very good tool to be able to use this. So here we go on the left-hand side here. This is currently native, but I can use these drop-downs and I can change it because I actually have three clips in here. Uh, it would be cool if we could put three side by side or even four or whatever, but it does seem to be limited to two, at least as far as I can tell. We could also do a side by side. We could do a side by side like this, uh, not split screen actually, and you can do uh, a few different ones, but you know, you kind of, and then you can kind of zoom in there. So actually, yeah, that actually works really well. I didn't use that. The, the only difference is I can't do a slide on this. Um, so that's really the only sort of limitation there, but we can go back to the split screen here 
and we can see that native side and then spatial upscaling on the, on the right, which is set to 77%, uh, which is actually, let me check my reference, 2954 by 1662. So we're at about 77% resolution there, native versus spatial. And we'll get in, in on some of these fine details here. Uh, and you can see it is at native. It's definitely a lot better you can, on these on these like fine mesh here, or this metal fencing or whatever, whatever this is, some kind of metal panel. Uh, very, very fine detail on that. We'll kind of move over here. And the native is definitely going to be a lot better. We move over to the spatial and you can see it definitely gets quite blurry. But, you know, this is something that will be available in any game so you can put it on something older. Uh, I'll go ahead and compare with DLSS as well now. So now we've got DLSS on the left and the spatial on the right, and you can see it is significantly better. Um, so yeah, this is all DLSS. This is the spatial upscaler via the NVIDIA driver at 77%. And yeah, the DLSS is significantly better. So given the choice, you obviously want to go ahead and utilize DLSS if you want to, but if you're on older GPUs that don't have the tensor cores and stuff and you want to get that a little bit of a boost there, um, you can sacrifice some image quality there to get a boost in your performance. Uh, but also worth worth taking a look at is the DLSS versus the native, which actually surprised me in this game. It's not the first time we've seen this, uh, seen something like this. Actually, if you look here with the DLSS on the left side, you could see it's actually a little bit sharper than the native. If you look at the native right there, you see how it's really blurry on these very, very fine pieces of metal. And then if we slide that over to the DLSS, you can actually see more detail in the space. And even on this pink blobby stuff that's on the right side here, which doesn't have a whole lot of detail, um, that even gets sharper with the DLSS, which is again on the left side, native is on the right. So let's go, oh, go ahead and hit, grab my slider, move that over. So on the native side, very blurry, very blurry, not a lot of detail to it. And we put on the DLSS and it actually gets a lot sharper. So that's really cool. So if you guys are interested in using the new upscaling tech, it's going to be available in the new NVIDIA driver uh, that is coming out. And it is recommended that you do a clean install uh, to make sure that the scaling options and everything show up for you in the control panel or in the GeForce experience. And I'll show you how you can use it if you want to. If you right click on your desktop, go to NVIDIA control panel and we'll wait for that to come up there and I'll move that centered on the screen. If you come into your manage 3D settings, now this, like I said, this image scaling option has been here uh, since since 2019, but it's recently got an up update with the algorithm and stuff um, to boost that image quality. And if we go ahead and turn that on, and then we also have the option to adjust the sharpening, which you can adjust, you know, to your heart's content. Uh, by default, it'll be at 50%. I don't really like to raise it up too much from there. 55, 60 is, is okay, but, um, you know, it's, it's going to come down to personal preference because at a certain point, depending on the resolution you're playing at, you can actually lose some image quality by bumping that up too much. And they also added in now, they have an overlay indicator that'll show up in the top left-hand corner of the screen if you want it on or not. Uh, you can disable it if you don't want to, but if you have it on, um, it'll show either green or blue based on whether it's just doing sharpening or if it's doing sharpening and upscaling, then it'll show up green. If it's just doing sharpening, then it'll be blue. So as long as you set it up correctly, you know, you can go ahead and hit OK on this. And then you will have to hit apply in the NVIDIA control panel and then it will be enabled and you can put it on in games if you are set up in full screen on those games. If you were going to be playing in not full screen or exclusive full screen, like say you want to play in borderless window or windowed mode, then you would actually have to physically change the desktop resolution, which you can also do here in the NVIDIA control panel. As you see, after I enabled that that option there, we now have some new resolutions here, these scaling resolutions. So 85% is 3264 by 1836. We've got 77%, 2954 by 1662. We've also got 67, which is 2560 by 1440, and all the way down to 1080p. So you've got quite a few different options there. Um, if you want to, these, these will also show up in game. So as most people probably should be playing in full screen. I personally prefer uh, to play in full screen. These resolutions here will now show up for you in game on your when it drops down for your dis, for your display resolution options, and then all you have to do is go ahead and select that, and it'll upscale and sharpen the image accordingly, give you a boost in performance, and hopefully not hit your uh, visual you know quality too much on there. So that's all I've got for you guys today on the new spatial upscaling update for the Nvidia scaling, and uh, also taking a look at the new iCat tool, which I said. Uh, personally, for me, that, that was the biggest thing to come out of this. I use DLSS in games when it's available. It gave me a good boost in BF2042. I was 
barely running over 60 frames on that at 4K maxed out. And then using the DLS, it bumped up my performance quite a bit. So that tech has come a long way since it first came out. When it first came out, I was like, I was totally against it because it did not look that great, but it's continually gotten better. Uh, I believe they're on version 2.3 now, which has been introduced to some games like Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, I believe Doom Eternal uh, got that update as well. And it's, you know, continu continuing to learn and get better over time. So the more games that get it, it's just going to keep improving over time. And hopefully at some, at some point, it's just going to be, it'll look ba it basically like we, we saw with, uh, with Guardians of the Galaxy there, it, comparing the DLSS versus native, the DLSS looked better. And we saw that back in, in Death Stranding as well, when I back when I, I tested DLSS in that. Um, that game looked significantly better with DLSS. Like, there were certain details like text and fine things on the character model and in the world that without the DLSS, it was pretty illegible. And the AI algorithm, which was which made basically just how I guess they made the game. I don't think any resolution really would have solved that. But I think it's the AI actually figuring out the way that it should look and sort of sharpening it up there and giving it, um, you know, a better look, honestly, at the end of the day. So uh, this is all really cool stuff. I look forward to using the iCat tool in the future for uh, new games and stuff that are coming out. So be on the lookout for that as we do more game comparisons and everything here on the channel. And I will catch you guys next time. Have a fantastic day. Ta-ra.